Hello, and welcome back to the Mid Amp Podcast. We are your host. My name is Tyler Munns, and on the other side of the screen for me is my good friend, Nathan Furmasu. Hello. And if you're joining us for the first time, um, we talk to each other about golf once a week or so, um, uh, specifically around the confines of trying to make golf a priority while we have a bunch of other stuff that we have to worry about, like being a husband, a father, uh, a good employee, um, good family member, good friend, all of those things that aren't golf, um, but we still really want to make it a point to not only get better, but um, get better when when it matters most, which is in this, uh, you know, in the confines of competition. Um, so, uh, with that in mind, um, Nathan, you got a new putter recently and so far I did get a new putter. You've liked it, right? I mean, I love it. Um, let me tell you what the aim bias and stroke type stuff mm -hmm. that is built into the Adele array fitting system is it's a real deal it's a real deal um standing i played today and i think i texted you and said i made just about everything inside of 10 feet um like i i missed i looked thought back over the round i know i missed a couple mm -hmm. um but like lip outs or had the line had the you know just didn't quite hit the right pace um but i poured in a lot of footage of putts um I made a slew of like five to eight footers, oh, those um, ones. which were, yeah, they were awesome for like getting up and down to save par a couple for like one for birdie. Um, and then I even made a couple of like 15 to 20 footers um, that were Sheesh. pretty big. Uh, so it was, it was nice. It's so nice to just be confident standing over ball and knowing, Hey, when I look down at this putter and I'm, I think I'm lining it up just like left edge or inside left or something like that. Like I know I am. Yeah. And so I can just, I can just make a pretty confident stroke. And I was probably hitting them a little firm cause I was mm. really confident, <laughs> but man, they were, just they were dropping. So with authority. I'll take it. Yeah. I mean, they well, were it, makes a a lot of, where, yeah. it makes a lot of sense because, um, their putters are engineered for adjustability and total putter customization. Uh, the array putter line from Adele Golf makes the takes the guesswork out of putting. With four different head shapes, four interchangeable hosels, and multiple alignment and weighting options, now you can confidently roll it as confidently as Nathan, knowing that your aim bias and stroke type are accounted for. Uh, you can learn more at AdeleGolf.com. That's E-D-E-L-G-O-L-F.com, because even one shot can change everything, or in Nathan's case, several feet of putts made. Mm-hmm. You know, my one shot today, uh, I was playing with a buddy and we had a, you know, we're always pretty competitive because we're pretty comparable and I would say like handicap skill level and everything like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I had him uh, by a couple stroke by a good four or five strokes early on. So he mm. had a couple of rough holes early on um, and he started to kind of get some momentum, get some feel going and hole eight, there's, it's just par four. We both hit decent tee shots. We both hit less than decent um, approach shots. Mine was okay. It was just kind of right of the green and a little in between a couple of little knolls. And I had to hit this kind of touchy, not flop, but uh, something with some softness to it. You know, yeah. some hands little, involved. Little finesse. Yeah. And, um, and he had more like a chip from across the green, tons of green mm -hmm. to work with. He chipped it to like, oh gosh, I don't even remember. I think he chipped it pretty close and then he, and he made the par putt and I uh, just caught a little too much ball for the type of shot I was trying to play. And so um, there was a chance for actually, no, he birdied it. I think he birdied Ooh. it. There was a chance for a two shot swing, right? Yeah. Essentially is what, that's how I'm remembering it now. Um, and I had like 18 feet back, back down the hill at this, at this, cup and i knew i needed to make it like for for the momentum just to kind of squash him because yeah. he's he's trying to stage a little bit of comeback oof poured it right oh. over the edge right over the edge Dagger. like oh in and twist of he, the knife he hung his head and i <laughs> kind of just gave him a swift kick in the butt and just said get out of here yeah um yeah no but that was a great one because i mean those long par putts they keep around going big time and i think 
after that point on, I've played in one over. So from like hole eight on, I was one over. That's some um, damn good just, golf. Yeah, I was playing solid after that. So, well, um, again, thanks so much to Adele for sponsoring um, the Midday Podcast. We are uh, so happy to be part of the Adele team. Um, I know we are both greatly enjoying the wedges and the putter. Um, Nathan picked up some some swag from them as well recently. He's looking fly out on the course, um, and I, and I know we've got some irons coming, which mm-hmm. I am I am getting giddy for. So yes. um, we'll we'll be sure to kind of recap the total, what's in the bag stuff uh, a little later when we when we have those uh, when those come in, which uh, again should be very soon, hopefully. Yeah, anytime. Um, tonight, today, I guess whenever you're listening to this, it's night for, time for us. Uh, behind the screen um uh you know last week we uh, went through my uh, qualifier uh for the oregon mid-am championship um <laughs> if you didn't listen to last week's episode didn't qualify it was close i only spoilers. missed by 14 strokes spoilers <laughs> missed the playoff by 14 strokes um but a couple days after that um nathan and i uh reverse rolls and he uh, I got on the bag and he um put on the glove and uh made mm-hmm. an attempt no you don't wear a glove yeah I do well oh, you do yeah I do yeah okay then he put on a glove and uh we went out and attempted to uh get Nathan to qualify so today tonight we're gonna be uh kind of going through his round um and just debriefing um on what what went on out there and uh, what we're going to learn from it and, and what we're going to uh, do moving forward. So um, I guess I can, uh, uh, you interviewed me, so I, I suppose I'll interview you. Uh, last week we started with the bad, so I figure let's, let's do that. Cool. Um, what, uh, what, what didn't work for you out there? Uh, I have a list of a couple things. Let's see. First of all, um, let's just not bury the lead. Uh, I played, I scored poorly. Yes. I don't want to say I played poorly because I actually felt pretty good about a lot of things, but I scored very poorly. Um, three T shots pumped dead left out of bounds. Yeah. And, and like the real out of bounds, like, like yeah, like re T <laughs> reload yeah, full, full, full out. Full. Yeah um down in distance yeah yeah so i think a part of the the rest like i hit a lot of really good drives as well oh um that was that was so not not to not to butt in but that was like the craziest part is is you hit three bad tee shots those three bad tee shots were out of bounds (laughs) were so bad they were so bad (laughs) the other 85 percent of your tee shots were so good like yeah yeah unbelievably good but yeah. it's just it was that that hot and cold unfortunately i mean like that right there was six strokes right just yeah those and three even tee shots the yeah, so it's hard to be like mm, upset or be like no i didn't do well i i chalk it up to i had just had a lesson a couple weeks before i've been working through some swing changes most of the time it was great a couple times stuff went off the rails and old patterns crept in and, um, Bob's your uncle. Um, and so we had a couple of reloads, but just in tournament golf man, that can't happen for scoring that can't happen. So I think I wrote down, like, I think this is just going to get better if I just keep working on the same stuff. I'm not sweating it too much, but that was definitely a problem. Um, I think, I still want to focus and work on how best to stay target focused. Um, that's been one of my one of my uh, interests, I guess, over the last few years, and just like learning how to play golf, right? How to keep the target in mind while you're while you're hitting a shot. And I've speculated and played around with different feels or thoughts, or you know, like using different senses. Um, and this was my first time recently in a tournament, obviously, um, you know, putting some of these things to the test 
And I think I ironed out some stuff. I don't think I found a whole lot um, in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think there were there were glimpses of things. Um, in the time since, I think I've actually kind of landed on a few things that I like. Um, so we're, we're building, we're building, but yeah, I need to, I need to continue to, uh, experiment with this, you know, uh, target focus, mental game sort of thing, how to, how to reach that. Uh, I think we talked about it while we were playing like those first, you know, handful of holes, like, how do you, f- how do you get that rhythm? Cause yeah. there are times where I stand, I go through my routine, I do all the same steps and I get up over the ball and there's just no flow to anything. It just feels disjointed. And then there are times where, you know, I do the same exact things and I just feel loose. I feel like there's a cadence to movement, to thought it's relaxed. It's easy. Um, and I don't know what the difference is right now. Um, but I'm searching for that unconscious competence space yeah. that we all are. Um, so yeah, that was one thing like definitely could use work aside from that. You know, I, I wrote these down as negatives, but I, the longer it's gone on, I, they're more like, ah, oh, there was, that was a bad part of the game, but I have caveats. Mm. So, um, like chipping and short game, I counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight instances where I could have gotten up and down and I did not. Um, but again, looking back at it, I drew some really crummy yeah. lies around the greens and I was actually, you know, pretty pleased in the moment with like, okay, well I, I did what I think I could do out of that. And I didn't, you know, you, leave it short and chip again. Yeah. I got so it on the green and I you would know. say, yeah, I would say to that, the stats don't tell this. This is a situation where like your up and down stats don't paint a good picture of the lies that you had where you could have certainly tried to finesse shots to get closer if we were really trying to grind and chase a number that wasn't necessary sure at that point you were just trying to hey just make sure like i have a putt for par and and unfortunately the lies that you drew on almost all of those um (laughs) were a situation where the the safest shot was you know being okay with like 15 to 20 feet yeah yeah i was trying that was one of my goals for the day is just you know just try and always make the right decision like let's play the statistics like the highest statistically um, successful shot. Yeah. Um, and yeah, sometimes it was like, okay, well, this means I'm going to be 20 feet away and trying to make a par putt, um, which is not good for scoring. And yeah, I could have tried to flop something or take a bigger swing, but I feel like those just, they don't pay dividends. Yeah. Um, when, when, unless you're really, really well too. playing it well playing and practicing a ton where you're like much yeah. more comfortable with yeah taking on that risk because you feel like you know you have the kind of the the mental like the, a bank of recent situations that you can kind of draw upon but it's like you're not you know we're not playing and practicing a ton we're you know we've got other shit to do so yeah i, I mean thought, I, yeah i thought for the most part all that stuff was really more decision based and that was, you made the right decision. Unfortunately, the best decision was to be okay with, yeah, 15, 20 foot par. Pots. A lot of bogeys. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of it. This is what it is. I mean, yeah, we, we don't practice and play a ton. Case in point, I played today for the first time since, uh, the qualifier it was two weeks ago. Yeah. So, um, my last note, I think on things that I need to improve on was putting. I, I did not putt well, um, but again, I would throw a caveat on that. I'm going to caveat that as well a little bit. Um, you actually putted had, pretty good on the front or your front nine. <coughs> sure. Yeah. On the back. You had 15 putts That's and not that, bad. that included a missed, uh, four footer. four footer for birdie. Yeah. Um, it didn't, uh, it just didn't feel good. I think it's probably, yeah. probably the bigger thing. Um, I felt pretty disjointed from the putter because I had just done like two days before the Adele fitting. And now I was like, Oh, I want to see, I know 
I like looking down at this blade putter and that looks right. And that well, looks square yeah. and it's beautiful. And then I pick up my mallet with a double bend shaft in it and I'm looking like, where is, yeah. where is this thing aimed? I have yeah, no you, idea. You, 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 yeah. you got the triple threat of changes. It's like <laughs> head shape, hosel type, which changes the toe hang. And then, yeah. uh, you know, and then just like the overall, just the, so, like the total, like, I mean, it couldn't have been more different. So tough, yeah. tough, uh, from a confidence standpoint, um, and going I think, into that round, I think that was mainly it too. Is just it was just a it was tough to feel like really confident in it, and you know that screws up everything else in putting. Like pretty much, you need that's the one thing you need in putting is like, right. oh yeah, this is I know where this is going. Um, and so then you know speed and line was it didn't really feel like I could hit either of those how I wanted to. Um, so it didn't feel like it was good. Um, it also just felt rusty, but you know, like I said, I think the, the sun is shining and it's a new day, um, for me in that department. So, uh, I'm not again, terribly concerned about it. Um, anyway, all that shakes out to a, uh, hefty 91, um, with a nine on eight with a yeah. And, and that is where I will, I will give myself one demerit on like the mental and or like attitude department. I, I think I, I was pretty pleased. I had a, honestly, I had a really good time. I was enjoying myself. It was fun to kind of go through the, the, uh, the chatter about, decision making and clubs and wind and yardages and all that stuff. And it's, it's fun to have a caddy and I was striking the ball fairly well. Um, you know, I had a good time, but that last hole, my, the ninth hole was my last hole, um, was the last time, uh, a really errant OB yeah. left came into play and I, the score was already, you know, pretty, pretty ugly and I was tired and you know, all these other things. And I kind of, I phoned it in a little and I, I, I would, um, I would, I would give myself a, a little, little red mark on the scorecard for, well, no red on in golf is usually a good thing. Yeah. I would like, if Black this mark. were, if yeah. this were a college paper, yeah. there, there would be some, some ink in there. Needs, needs and, improvement. Eh, or just a should, question mark by it. Really? I could have, I could have saved two strokes right there just from probably yeah. you could have. interest. <clears throat> That's what I had, but I'm open to, uh, Another yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I think, I think like you're a little bit of a victim of circumstance with just those mega misses. Um, and I think that kind of bleeds into kind of other aspects of the round. I don't really ever remember you making any bad decisions. I remember you rushing a couple of shots that ended up like approach shots that ended up not being good positions. Um, but beyond that, like, I think you made all the right decisions in the right moments. You just got some really bad breaks. You got, you, you had three balls that just went left on you. And yeah. like, that's going to happen. And as you get more comfortable with the swing, that dispersion, those b- bad ones are going to be in play. And all of a sudden, like, I mean, I counted it up six strokes from the the three drives out of bounds you had three three putts, which is very uncharacteristic for you. Mm. Um, you missed a four footer, which again is very uncharacteristic for you. So you know that's ten strokes. Um, you know yeah. you don't pump that ball out of bounds on on nine. I don't see how you're coming away with, from that hole with let with, with more than a par. So you know, or or you know maybe call it a bogey if we want to be sure. generous uh, or. Uh, or conservative rather. Um, and yeah. then the same thing on one, you don't pump that ball out of bounds. You're not making triple. No, you might yeah. make bogey. You're not making triple. So it's like, yeah. I think ha- you, you take those things away, which, you know, it, it wasn't a bad decision thing. It was just like golf happened thing. Um, yeah. you know, you're looking at 71 to eight, 79 to 81, which like from a field perspective, if, if, I wasn't paying super close attention to all of the numbers while I was walking with you. But if you asked me like, Hey, what did that feel like? I would have said, yeah, somewhere in like the, 
low eighties, like very low eighties. And and yeah. if, if if you would have told me, oh, I shot a seventy nine, I'd be like, yeah, I can see that. Like because you were hitting the ball. I mean, you were when you hit the driver well, it was some of the best I've ever seen out of you. Um, yeah. Or it is the best I've ever I've seen out of you. Um, and then you were you were hitting really good iron shots. You hit great wedge shots. Um, you did the best you could on some some really tough lies around the green. Um, so I yeah, I mean, from like all of the things that you wanted to do while you were out there, I think you accomplished all those things. I just think golf happened and we got tired at the end. And yeah, yeah. Just kind of had to limp in, and that's yeah. that's golf sometimes. Yeah, and I mean, we said it. I'm pretty sure we said it on here, but I definitely said it just to you personally, or, you know, like this is, mm-hmm. this is a, I was looking at it never with any kind of score in mind. I really didn't even pay attention to what numbers were qualifying day that I played. Um, cause I just, I didn't care. I wanted to, well, no, not that I didn't care, but I didn't, well, yeah, I was less interested in that. I wanted to, treat this as an experiment like okay can i put my game on display and not let anything else get in the way that's going to influence this experiment like i'm not going to add confounders of like a bad attitude or bad decision making um i want to just see what my swing and and my short game and and putting and whatnot are what what they're capable of and i yeah it felt more like yeah okay i'm capable of that 80 ish mark um the score definitely just didn't add up to that Mm -hmm. and you know so what i i was texting with a bunch of people like my my dad and some friends who were following along and stuff afterward they're like what happened and i was like honestly dude i don't know i had a great time um golf man golf golf happened um but i i realized one thing was like you know one positive of being in this mid am you know season of life is that i can go out and do that and it doesn't freaking matter right like that i could go shoot a 91 has no bearing on like i went to work the next day people treated me the same they thought of the same of me you know like <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter i came home my kid still you know cried and wanted me to feed her or you know like play video games with my older one or hang out with my wife like it has no almost little to no significance in my life of like what I shot. So like score wise, it was like, okay, whatever. I don't really care. Um, I had a good time and I'm proud of some of the stuff that I did and it just looks ugly on a scorecard. That's all. Yeah. So what? Um, what, so speaking of, you know, I guess the good that, that you can glean out of it. What, what are those like good things that you think that you, you did? Um, you know, while you're out there. Yeah. Um, well, we kind of alluded to it a few times. I felt like I struck the ball really well. Mm -hmm. Um, having just made a couple of swing tweaks, swing changes, um, things have clicked right away. Like stuff just feels right. So there was a lot less curvature in the misses. Um, you know, in in years past times past, I've, I would have some big hooking misses, even with irons or, or wedges uh, or blocks to the right. And, and those were, far less frequent and far less, um, severe. So, you know, it, it, that's, it's going to make you feel like you struck the ball really well. And I, I feel like I did. Um, I hit a lot of really good shots. Mm -hmm. I just hit also a couple really bad (laughs) ones. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, overall, I feel like I struck the ball well for, for my game. It was definitely better than, than the average has been. Um, next thing I think is I stuck to my processes and routines really well. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we talked through every shot that, you know, really needed any kind of talking through. Um, I did my due diligence on, on all everything I can remember to like with like putts and chips around the green to at least like walk up or look at it from another angle, like do some, do some fact finding aside from just standing behind the ball and look at it and putt or chip. Um, cause I, I know that that's an important facet to just get a whole, an accurate picture, um, for me. So I think I did that anytime it was pertinent that I needed to do that. Um, and I, as far as I can remember, 
maintained the same pre-shot routines um, very consistently as well. Um, I did mention earlier that sometimes they didn't really even feel feel that good or didn't really like accomplish the goal of getting me into any kind of like um, performative state, but whatever, I did them. Um, so check that box. Um, last thing was... Uh, my attitude was good. I maintained, uh, like a, what my goal was a, just a neutral space of mind. Um, I think I got two up at one point in the round. Um, when I, it was when I almost chipped in on 17 and I made that par and I just strung together a good stretch of holes and then 18, I hit, I got, I could feel myself like a little antsy on that walk from 17 to 18, like want to get up there. I want to go hit, yeah. I want to go, you know, and I feel like that was me like excited and, and like, I want to keep playing. I'm feeling good. I'm like, let's go. I'm grooving. Um, but I think I got a little too, um, <clears throat> a little too up mm -hmm. and I hit a okay T shot. It was, uh, you know, it was in play. It was on the left side. Um, and I had, you know, a wedge in, um, and then I fatted that wedge and that like immediately, like the what emotive distance of feeling like pretty up to then kind of on alert because my tee shot was a little, like I was a little unsure of what it was going to be like. And then we found it and it was good. And then I hit a fat shot and it was just like, Doo! yeah. Um, so I think that at one point kind of jump up and bit me and then yeah, on the last hole, I kind of gave up. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise I gave myself a B plus. I was yeah. like, you know what? I did pretty good. Um, but there were a couple of instances on either end where it was like, no, that wasn't very neutral. Um, right. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree on, on that. I think you, I, yeah, I can't really remember a time where you deviated from going through kind of just the same process procedure every single time and assess things as, uh, rationally and as objectively as you could, um, and then made, and then made the right decision. And then obviously you just kind of deal with the part that we can't really control, which is the outcome, you know, as much as we think we can, um, <clears throat> we kind of can't cause a lot of, you know, the ball is in contact with the club face for no time at all. And so anything after that is just out of our control. So I thought yeah. you managed that portion, you know, all of the controllables you manage those very well. Yeah. Thank you. Which I think is just going to like, as this stuff starts clicking in, like you're going to see, I mean, like today, I mean, you're t talking about you, you know, go out and shoot 75. Like, you know, it's like just that kind of stuff happens. It's like when yeah. the swing clicks, like you have all of the soft skills, so to speak, that turns around into a very easy 75 that could have been par or better. Um, because like you have all those things in place that allow that to manifest because all of the technical stuff is clicking. So, yeah, I mean like that's just gonna, that's just gonna happen more and more and more. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I really feel like, I don't know when the last time it was that I felt like I was on like a trend mm -hmm. upward with my game. I I've, I've felt pretty stagnant for probably the last, eight years, I don't know, mm -hmm. nine years or whatever. Um, um, so I really feel like, yeah, cool. I am so confident in this putter and I'm really liking the swing stuff that I'm working on and I'm seeing immediate benefit and it just makes it seem like it's so much easier than to focus on the golf and kind of get around the course. Like yeah. it, it was not nice conditions today. It was rainy and cold <laughs> and windy and um yeah but man i hit a lot of really good shots and you know the short game's starting to come around because i've been trying to put in a little bit more work into into that and the i didn't hit any ob so <laughs> there were no there we go. I, matter of fact i don't think i even missed I think I maybe missed one drive to the left and it was just, it was fine. It was yeah. in play still. It was just in the rough. Um, everything else like man was, was always at least had a, had a look, had a swing. Um, so, I mean, it's a different game for sure. Um, 
and I've done not not nothing between <laughs> between a ninety one and a seventy five. Like nothing has happened. Yeah, but just reps. Speaking so. of, um, what I guess what are you going to try to take from the the mid am Q uh, round and you know and, and try to apply it into future competitive rounds? Um, if you know, if anything. Um, it was definitely, uh, ironically enough, it was probably the most comfortable I've felt mm -hmm. in a tournament round, um, it, I, that I can remember. Um, and I think that was because of what my like process goals were and my attitude goals were like my, my goals for the round were more, um, I would say the intangibles yeah. rather than, oh, I want to score well i want to make some birdies and yada 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 i i was a lot more these other things um that felt like cool i can control these and if i do these at least i will probably get a little more comfortable and a little more settled and and enjoy it much much more um i'd love to take that forward i mean tournament golf it's so easy to get wrapped up in it and there are you're bound to always be playing with somebody who's going to take it so seriously and just be grinding over everything. And that's, I mean, at, at our age and our sort of <laughs> demographic, like, bro, what are you out here? What are you doing that for? Like, how, like enjoy it. Yeah. Um, you can take it seriously, not, but yeah, you can, you can also take like, it. Yeah, absolutely. You Try your you know, best, of yeah. course, but also like, have a good time if you're not enjoying it why are you paying money for the entry fee you're not a pro you yeah. know like don't do that yeah. so um i definitely want to take that uh forward the attitude with me. yeah yeah attitude stuff um i we talked through approach shots a lot more than i typically do if i'm just out farting around so at like getting a yardage to the flag, then relating that plus or minus to center of the green or wherever our center of our, you know, like landing area shotgun was. pattern yeah. landing area would be. And then from there figuring out, okay, well, what does the lie give me plus or minus? What does the wind give me plus or minus um, elevation plus or minus kind of thing and getting better numbers just through Doing, thinking about it yeah just doing, doing a little more exercise math. Yeah. yeah just doing some math um i think that probably probably um i would say shave some strokes um and would shave some strokes if i were better about doing that all the time um yeah. i definitely did i did more of that today and it was it was great it paid paid dividends for sure because there were a couple times where like i hit there was one hole where I was 260 out and I hit a hybrid and it, because of the wind, because of the elevation, because of the, I had a really good lie, like I hit it to the back of the green. Yeah. It was great. There was also a hole that was 180 that I hit the same hybrid and I didn't get there. Yeah. Um, you know, but it was still the right club choice. Like yeah. it was, it's, um, so understanding like how variable that is. I mean, I feel like sometimes we get too tied up and like, Oh, well this is my 180 club. So, you know, I hit this when I'm around 180. it's like, well, okay, but what's the real number that you <laughs> right. need to hit it. And also, you know, you can take that club and hit it from 140 if the conditions match up right. And like, it's the right club. So uh, just, just being more aware of that doing a little more math. Yeah. Um, I think that is, that's a, a good piece for me to add to my, to my game going forward. And, you know, it was, I, it's not that I didn't know to do that beforehand. It's just, it's kind of maybe a little it's a easier. Lot of work. It's, it's, it's a lot of, it's more, it's easier with a caddy. Cause it's, yeah. there's someone else you can kind of like, you hey, can here's what I'm thinking. And, Does this yeah. make sense? You know? Yeah. Um, and that it just flows a little faster. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I, I liked that. I want to, I want to do more of that. Um, cause it feels really good to hit the green 
when you're a long way out and the wind's blowing yeah. and, um, you know, people are coming up short left and right and you just stick one dead center swinging easy because you picked the right club. Yep. That's fun. Yeah. I know this, uh, interview is about you, but I, along the same vein of that, you know, kind of talking through things and really like thinking analytically about, Hey, I know it says this, but this is what I really need to do. Um, I had, uh, I played on Sunday and I was two over through 14 at stone Creek. Um, and I came up on 15, which is par three over the ravine. And, um, it was, you know, playing 142 and, um, the wind was just off the right. And, um, I was like, okay, I'm going to trust that the ball is going farther for me, even though it's cold and wet. And so, uh, norm, you know, so, so I, I picked my club and I was like, if this, if I hit this really good, it's going to land center of the green and kind of skip back, which is okay. Cause it'll just get to the back of the green. Mm-hmm. Um, if I don't catch it really good, it'll hit the front of the green and it should still, like, I should still be able to cover it. If I hit it horribly, it's going to go in the ravine, but it doesn't matter what club I hit. Like if I hit it horribly, yeah. it's going to go in the ravine. So, right. um, so I, I, I took nine iron. And I freaking flushed it and it was a high draw and it was mm. kind of like tracking, tracking, tracking at this ridge that, um, that bisects the green. And mm-hmm. I'm like, man, if that hits the right side of the ravine, that is going to roll down to the hole. And it, we could, ha- yeah. we could be in a, a predicament, oh. um, <laughs> you know, or roll, it roll up, you know, kind of bounce, kick forward. It sure. hits. Um, it hits and, and balls had been like literally bouncing like off, to the back of the green or off the green all day, like h- super hard greens. That's stone Creek. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm calling this for my one shot because I went through that exact exercise that you talked about where I'm like, okay, well, I, I know it says 140. Normally I would like try to baby like an eight iron, even, you know, even with like, my new distances. I mean, honestly, dude, like at, with one f- gunning at 140 last year, I would have hit seven iron because like yeah. I had zero confidence in my ability to hit the ball f- like far. Um, and so taking nine iron just felt weird to me as silly as it sounds. Um, but I trusted it and I, it hit pin high. So it flew all the way there and mm-hmm. it just happened to hit and stop. It's like the only green that where it hit and stopped. And it's <laughs> like, it stopped perfectly on top of the ridge. So it didn't roll one way or the other. So I had this really slippery putt coming down that I almost made. Um, mm. It was like an easy par. That, that was my, uh, it was 15th hole. It's my 14th green hit. Um, nice. Uh, on the day at the 15th hole, I'd missed one green up to that point. So um, that was my one shot, um, which is brought to us by our, the fine folks at Adele. Um because one shot makes a difference. And that was a shot that I was really proud of. I mean, I kind of, <laughs> kind of uh, bit the bit it on the next three holes, but um, <laughs> that hole was sick. That <laughs> shot was sick. Like total confidence inspiring, like process was perfect. Swing yeah. was basically perfect. Yeah. Um, and I trusted the numbers. And so I was, I was really proud of that. So, yeah. That's a good hole too. That's like a so picturesque too to hit a good yeah. shot on that hole. It's like you got the big trees as a backdrop, and then you, the ravine and everything. Yeah, it's that's it's, that's it's pretty. It's poor man's number twelve at uh, at Augusta. But very poor, very poor. <laughs> very not poor. even not even close. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, let's see. Um, so you've played a handful of times added a handful more birdies to the birdie Yes. I finally broke the seal, got a couple today. He's on the board. Um, we're on the board, folks. Um, one of them was a chip in from the back of the green. That was good. Like I, I could have raised the wedge like, you know, two, two bounces, like the second bounce. So it was like, it was a little bump and run. Took my new 48. Um, and kind of, as you say, back footed it and just, just popped it on, just popped it on there, you know? And I knew it was going to break and release out. And yeah, literally like the ball flew maybe three feet 
bounced or landed on the green, took one hop, and it was like, that's in. And <laughs> Logan, who I was playing with, he, I can't remember, he like raised his hand or like was like, oh, good shot, like great shot, that's going in. Like it wasn't even halfway there and he was saying stuff. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, yeah. Just trickled over the front. You go grab that. <laughs> yeah, go get that. Michael. <laughs> go get that. Hey, Michael. Go get that. <laughs> Uh, the other, the other birdie I had was just, uh, it was really satisfying. Um, we had joined up with a couple of employees from the course, uh, for the back nine and we're playing with them and they're, they're sticks. They're really good. Probably. I don't know what they are plus handicaps though. I'm sure. Um, and so they like took us over to the, the, I was down at Tristing tree. So they took us over to like the beaver tea where like the OSU, Mm. um, players will play i don't know it's like the black it was the black yeah. it was back it's a different angle than i've ever played this whole at but um they're like oh what you do is you just hit it out that way and then it ends up short of these this cops of trees and then you've got you know an open look in so i hit the drive on a line exactly where they say looked perfect it was beautiful we get up there i had one oh this is one of those situations i had like 156 in but the wind was dead into our face and this green because of where the pin is, which is kind of like front, this green's funny. It's like sort of X shaped, like not so, not so dramatic as like a full on X, but basically there's a center portion and there's kind of a little nub, you know, in four different directions. Well, each nub is actually just kind of like a little like protrusion with false, you know, front side back yeah. false, false, everything in between the nubs. So really it's a fairly good size green, but really the only place you can hit it is like dead center or maybe like a little bit back. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, everything else will not hold the green. So pin was up front ish. And so I'm like, okay, well there's plus 10 right there and into the fan plus another probably 15 and I'm 150 something out. I don't remember. I just pured this six iron and it was the perfect, like, Oh, I'm going to start it at the flag and it's going to be a little bit of a cut kind of, kind of a fall and thing, but the wind's going to hold it up and just actually push it center of the green. Perfect. Perfect. And had, uh, 18 feet for birdie and just poured it in. So good. It was such like a, there's a long par for, well, playing long par for just three good that's shots. A, that, that's that, a man's birdie, that was, dude. That was, yeah. Oof. Yeah. It's a grand had, man's birdie. I had like, my, my chest hair was starting to like grow. Yeah. Like right after that, it was weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you had, you had to trim your beard before you got home because it grew so much. I did. Yeah, actually. Um, I'm balding. That's how manly it was. Like just wow, male. That's a lot balding. of testosterone. dude. <laughs> right. All Whoa. at once. Whoa. Yeah. Um, so that was, no, that one felt really good. So I've got, I've got two now we're, we're on the board. We're cooking. Dude. Um, which brings our total to 17 so far. And like the nice summer weather hasn't even started. No, it's barely so, even golf season. Yeah, it's great. So, um, that's our loving and gentle and sly reminder to, Hey, We've got a birdie on the birdie thon folks. Yeah. The link is in the show notes. The link is in the bio of our uh, of, of our Instagram page. Speaking of, you can mm-hmm. find us on Instagram at Mid Am Podcast. Um, you can find um, me personally at Faden Fairway. You can find Nathan at Nathan and at Thistle Leather Goods. Um, yeah, please, please, please check out the birdie uh, birdie thons. Um, I'm I have plans to make a promo video for Instagram to explain mm. that a little bit further, but I've been waiting for some like nice ish weather. Mm-hmm. Then I also lost the uh, tr- monopod that I record with. So I have oh, a yeah. new one. So that'll be here on Monday. So maybe All next right. week we'll see. Yeah, we'll get there. We just need, you know, a handful more people to support the kids. Cause yeah. the birdie a proceeds are going to Oregon junior golf. Oh, yep. um, you can pledge an amount per birdie that Tyler and I make as a team, or you can just pledge a, a one solid amount. Um, if you're not interested in rolling the dice on how good we get at golf. Yeah. Cause I mean, I, I, I would say buy in now with a fixed, uh, fixed donation, because I think, I think we've opened the floodgates. I think, 
I think some some special stuff's going to happen this season. So yeah, buy low, sell high. Absolutely. Um, and if we have to sweeten the deal, I think we've got some cool like giveaway things. Oh yeah, we'll auction yeah, we'll things that we're we'll, going yeah. to do. But we're going to hit our goal one way or another. But uh, hopefully, it's just with really good play and your generosity and our generosity. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Is there any? Is there anything else? Do you have anything else? No. I have one thing. Okay. Um, hey, everyone. Um, Tyler here. Um, I want to talk to you guys about unsolicited advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't. Don't. Uh, if you're like, hey, I see this cool post about this guy who maybe lost a little bit of weight. He's proud of himself. Don't. Go on to that post and start commenting about how he's not optimizing his diet. Don't do it. Nope. Someone posts a video about a swing that they feel good about. Don't go on that post and start criticizing it, especially if like you're not a golf pro. And even if you are a golf pro, uh, if they didn't specifically ask for your advice, don't do it. Um, no one wants it. No one wants to hear it. I can guarantee you that everyone in your life has the exact same reaction when you give them unsolicited advice. It's <laughs> shut up. Shut yes. your face. Yes, please. Um, so, so yeah, if you're don't, sitting there don't hearing, do it. hearing this advice and you think that's not me, there, you he's know not, what? He's not referring to me. Yes, he's I am. Talking to me. I'm you talking know, to you specifically. It's probably you. Yeah, it's probably you. Don't do it, man. It's yeah. just no one, no one wants it. And you're not really helping. Let's be honest. Not at all. No, it's just annoying. And yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know why it bugs me so much. But every time someone, get, I mean, like genuinely, I just posted a photo like of a before and after, saying, "Hey, I've been, I've been focusing on trying to lose a little weight so that." My joints don't hurt as bad. I've made some progress. Found an old picture. Here's a new picture. Looks pretty good. You got dudes in there being nice. like, bro, bro, bro. Get rid even, of the egg McMuffin and eat four hard boiled eggs. Do you even I lift? I don't want to do I don't want to eat four hard boiled eggs. Wait, but Joe Rogan said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Have you seen the size of Joe Rogan's head? I don't, I don't think, I don't think he's to be trusted. Uh, in anything health related, um, I just don't do, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you really should drop that. Yeah, I know. I should probably just like mainline egg whites. I'm not going to do that because I no. don't want to want to walk into traffic. I want to want to smile. So yeah. I'm going to eat a sausage egg McMuffin because those taste good. Yeah. They are uh, readily available when I need them when I'm having a busy morning and I'm driving around. And they fit within my caloric budget. So I'm just going to do that. And then you can shut the hell up. That's what, <laughs> that's what you can do. So eat the food, um, people eat the food. Just eat, yeah, dude, eat the food, have fun eat on the, the golf course. Uh, you don't have to like yeah. max stat every aspect of your life. Um, it's just a, it's impossible. Yeah. It's a, it's a fallacy. You cannot yeah. optimize no. uh, impossible. So don't try um, just, Try try your best and smile and understand that your opinion is as important to me as it is to an ant, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. zero. So, so next week. That's my Tyler, unsolicited advice. Shut next, the hell up. Tune in next time where Tyler and I talk about the 75 hard challenge. <laughs> and... <laughs> We're just gonna be eating raw bull testicles. Did I did I ever tell you I I made when I first when that was first going around and I heard about it I made a hundred soft challenge. Um, I like mine a lot more. I will have to dig that up. It was pretty oh please do good. It was next pretty next good. week. Well, yeah, I've been looking for a new program. I hundred soft right. sounds hundred right soft. up my alley. It was legit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I smell a money making opportunity. We might Absolutely. we might reach that fundraising goal. I'm gonna write a book. I'm gonna you. write a book, and oh, I'm yeah, gonna dude. I'm gonna start another podcast. <laughs> we'll start a podcast to review this one, and then also that. Absolutely. All right, cool All right. guys. Um, 
Well, if you're still it. here, <laughs> if you're still here, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks for listening. Please rate and uh, review and subscribe and, and all that fun stuff. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. I think we'll, we'll figure out something to talk about next week. Probably book club. I think we got book club. We got, we got book club. review. We've got a couple of potential interviews we got all lined up, but we're getting into playing pipe. season. So yeah. my hope is that most of the stuff we talk about moving forward is like birdies, birdies and shots of the day and yeah, this, that, and the other. So um, stay tuned. Cause I think, yeah, if you're, if you, a lot of people like the scorecard review stuff, got a lot of good feedback on that. The, a lot of that stuff's going to be coming just because we're going to be playing more because the weather's nice. Yes. And the days are longer. Yes. So, all right. Till next time. Bye-bye.